So YouTube is funny in the sense that if you click on a video, it recommends a lot more videos like that. Well, at some point I clicked on a video of somebody um, like climbing up into the mountains and creating this like off grid house. He just takes like a backpack with a hammer and a saw and he just like makes a house out of wood that he finds or other things like that. And I thought that was a really interesting idea and I thought it would be cool if uh, I kind of challenged myself to see if I could model something like that in 15 minutes. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna jump into SketchUp, we're gonna have the 15 minute timer running and we're gonna see how much of an off-grid pallet house I can model in 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got my timer right here. When I click play, I'm gonna move it off the screen just so I have some room to work. This typically hasn't been my kind of video before. I'm actually a little bit uncomfortable making this kind of video, but I think it might be kind of fun. And so let's go ahead and let's get started. So I'm gonna click the play button. I'm gonna move this off the screen and we're gonna start modeling. So, and what I wanna do, and I have 15 minutes now, is I wanna start just by modeling out the base. I think that's probably a good place to start. And I'm assuming this is gonna be maybe, we'll call it eight foot long by six foot wide, something like that. Then I'm just gonna draw a box right here. And so what I'm gonna wanna do though, is I'm going to want to um, have a little bit of an outward taper. That's what I saw in the video that I watched, which I will link to in the notes down below. Um, it's so, I don't want this to just be kind of a straight up and down, though that would be a little bit easier. Um, so I'm assuming what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have an eight foot width at the top. And so what I want is I want this to be seven feet high. So basically what I'm doing is I'm assuming that the length of the building is gonna be the same, but then the width is gonna kind of like taper outwards. So I need to start by just roughing out that shape in SketchUp. So, and then I'll just take these, use the move tool and copy mode like this and draw a line across. And so what I wanna start with is I wanna start just making sure that I actually have like something at the end of this. So I'm gonna start just by roughing out the shape in here like this. So I'm just gonna draw these edges in here. What that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to see where the face of this building is. So I'm gonna start just by kind of like blocking this out. And then I'm assuming that the roof is gonna go up as well. So I'm gonna draw a line to the center right here and I'm gonna draw a line up and we'll say this maybe has a height of another six feet. And again, I'm just gonna block this out. That way, at least at the end of this, I can tell you that I have something. <laughs> so we've got this kind of like roughed out. So that's gonna be kind of the general shape of my building. And probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of this off to the side. So what I'm trying to do is make it so that if I mess something up completely over here, that um, we still have something that we can come back to on this side. And I think I'm gonna start actually by working on the roof. Um, I don't know if that's the right approach, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. And so I'm assuming that we're gonna have some kind of board that runs up to the roof right here. And modeling out this board could be a little bit tricky at this angle. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my axis tool like this, and I'm just gonna align my axis with this point right here. And I'm, I'm assuming you can't build this whole thing with pallets. You're gonna have to have some kind of like a two by six or something like that to act as a rafter. So I'm just gonna say this is gonna be five and a half inches and we'll call that good. So then what I can do is I can copy this edge up like this and we can draw this in as a surface. And I'll probably extend this up um, in a second. But what I want is this is going to be we'll say it's gonna have an inch and a half thickness like this. And then I'm just gonna triple click on this and I'm gonna make this a component and we'll call this rafter like this. And then I can move this over so that it aligns with this point right here. Well then what I can do is I can extend this up and I may be getting way too complicated with this for the amount of time that I've given myself, but we'll give it a try anyway. So I want to start by resetting my axes. So now my axes are reset. Now that means I can use the rotate tool in copy mode in order to copy this. And I'm just going to copy it, whoops. Like this, times four. 
And so what we can do with these is we can take these and we're gonna take them all and I'm going to intersect them together. So we did have these in here as components. I suppose actually we could come in here and just draw a line across the surface and then push pull this across in order to remove this. It's not perfect, but considering the amount of time I've given myself, I think I'm gonna go ahead and call that good. And so from a roof framing standpoint, I'm not gonna get too much more com complex about this um, for right now. So for right now, I'm just going to assume that these might extend down a little bit, just as kind of an overhang. Just like this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and work on my structure down below for a little bit. So I'm assuming what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna have some sort of like a two by six or um, maybe like a six by six, something like that. Um, that's gonna make up the actual structure that goes on down here. So I'm just gonna model those out. So I'm gonna say five and a half. Might not even need to be five and a half. It might just need to be like a four by four. So three and a half by three and a half. So what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna jump into x-ray mode. I'm gonna push pull this up right here. And then I'm actually going to move the top of this out like this in order to create my support. And so then I can hide this whole thing. I'm gonna turn x-ray mode off and I'm gonna use the move tool and copy mode after I make this a component. So we'll make this a support right here. Note that I have nine minutes left on the clock, so be interested to see what else I can do with this. But I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode. I'm going to do a divided by two right here. And then I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode again. I'm going to copy these across. So I'm going to copy these to negative one. Like this. So I've got base supports this way, and then I just need simple supports on the side. So what I can do is I can just unhide this surface right here so that I can see this and model it in. And on the front of the building, I'm assuming I'm gonna have a three foot door. So I'm gonna do one and a half feet this way and one and a half feet this way. That may actually be too large of a door for what we're doing right now, but that's okay. And I'm assuming the door is gonna go all the way up like this. Well then, I can model out my supports that would go around that. So, three and a half, three and a half. I'm push pull that up. I'm glad I left this front side square. Take this whole thing, we're gonna make it a component. Like this. Use the move tool in copy mode to copy this across. Like this. And I'll actually erase out these extra edges for right now. On the back side, I am assuming that I'm just gonna have one kind of in the center. So I'm gonna go to x-ray mode, unhide, all. And we'll copy this so that it aligns with this back point right here. And then just for time's sake, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my whole roof, turn it in a group, and I'm gonna hide it. I'm gonna just gonna draw a rectangle across the top, inset it this far. And I'm just gonna push pull this up like this. And we're gonna say this is gonna be three and a half inches high. And obviously my framing is not exactly right, but I think it gives us a good idea of what this could be. So then I'm gonna do an unhide all and take a look at this. So now what I need to do, and this probably needs a vertical support in the middle. Oh no, we've got one here. 
So I've got just under six minutes left, so I have to figure out how to best utilize my time now. So there's a couple things I still wanna do. So for example, I want to add siding to my walls. So that's one thing we could do. Um, I think that's what we're gonna do for right now. So what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna add siding that runs along here. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm going to draw a vertical siding piece inch and a half high we're gonna assume the whole thing has a thickness of maybe like three quarters of an inch let's say a half inch and I'm assuming this would basically be the palette pieces that make this up but I'll make a copy of that here And that height is not nearly high enough. That needs to be three and a half inches long is what that needs to be. So there we go. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this out here. I'm actually gonna take that profile and move it off to the side so I can use it again later. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this a group and I'm just gonna copy it down. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a rotation first. Not much, maybe like negative five degrees. And then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode Like this and so what that did is that gave me this surface right here there's actually a, an extension called curic face knife that I've used in the past and I'm gonna enable that real quick and I should probably save now that I think about it so I'm gonna do a file save as and so what curic face knife does is it allows me to use a um, it allows me to use a surface in order to cut multiple objects so what I want to do is I want to put all these in a group. And I'm going to draw a face that runs along this surface. And I have just under three minutes left. But what that did is that came in here and that actually cut that geometry in here so that it now aligns with the surface right here. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode, copy this, and I'm gonna flip it. Like this, so we're gonna move this back See, this is why I use the scale tool in order to flip this. But there we go. We're just gonna move this back over here. And since I am basically out of time, we're gonna cheat a little and we're gonna move this post over here. <laughs> so then we're just gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna take this profile I'm gonna rotate it so that it aligns with the surface. I'm just gonna push pull it across like this. 
we'll make it a group. And in this case, I'm just going to make a copy along this using this line right here. And so then I'll just use the move tool in copy mode to create a bunch of copies here. So we'll do times And so in this case, I'm going to rotate this up right here. And I really want to align it so that it aligns with this edge right here. Oh man, I'm not even close. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, so that is unfortunate. I'm not even close to getting the whole thing done, um, but I think I made some pretty good progress in the 15 minutes I had. So the options moving forward on something like this is I can go through and I can make a video showing you how I finished the whole thing out, um, or we could just do another challenge with more time, or I could just go back to the regular kind of content. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. This is one of the things I want to try in 2022. I really just want to, when something's interesting to me like this, I want to go ahead and make a video about it with SketchUp. So I'd love to hear from you what you think about this style of video. If you enjoyed it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.